Now to this story, revolutionary <laughs> technology that can edit genetic mistakes is getting attention and scrutiny this morning. CRISPR could help rid us of diseases like cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, and even HIV and cancer. Think about that. But many scientists, including CRISPR's developer, Jennifer Doudna, are calling for a moratorium on its use in humans. Tomorrow, she holds a global summit on the ethical issues. And only on CBS This Morning, Doudna shows us why, for all its promise, CRISPR is surrounded by controversy. And what is CRISPR? CRISPR, first of all, it's an acronym. Mm -hmm. uh, it stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. A huge mouthful. You can see why we use the acronym CRISPR. So I'm sorry, what's CRISPR again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Geneticist Jennifer Doudna gets asked that question a lot. A researcher and professor at UC Berkeley, Doudna has become a spokesperson for a gene editing technology she's credited with developing, that mouthful known as CRISPR. I've heard it compared to essentially like a film editor, slicing yeah. a bit of film. I would say that's a great analogy, mm -hmm. yeah. How does that work then? Well, think about a film strip, you know, and you see a particular segment of the film that you want to replace. And if you had a film splicer, you would go in and literally cut it out and piece it back together, uh, maybe with a new clip. Imagine being able to do that in the genetic code, the code of life. You could go in and snip out a piece and replace it with something that um, corrects a mutation that would cause disease. That's incredible. It's incredible. CRISPR has generated immense excitement because it's fast, cheap, and can cut and paste genetic code with great precision. It used to take months or years to alter a single gene. Now that can be done in a matter of days. Could it end cancer? What I'm excited about there is the potential to use the CRISPR technology to program a patient's immune system to recognize tumor cells in a precise way. Could it cure at some point, virtually any disease? I don't know about any disease, but I think any disease that has a genetic uh, basis is something that could be treated using the CRISPR technology. And imagine, Doudna says we could expect to see clinical applications of CRISPR within the next few years. This is no longer science fiction. But alongside CRISPR's promise come some fears here, of its perils, like embryo editing that could lead uh, to designer babies. What is the dark side of this technology? One of them is, of course, uh, making changes to human embryos, which become permanent. So we're talking about something that would affect human evolution. You could have an instance where a lab is creating lots of human embryos just for the sake of experimenting on genome editing on them, right? If you're asking me, could that be done technically, the answer is it could, right? Could it be done in, uh, you know, with current regulations in place? Certainly not, not in the U.S. No, or Europe. Right? Or Europe, right, mm -hmm. yeah. There's still a lot of other countries other than the U U.S. Well, this is the thing, I mean, right? Yeah, science is global, saying, right? Yeah. Science is global. And, you know, and diff there are different cultural viewpoints on that kind of application. In April, Chinese scientists reported using CRISPR to edit the disease genomes of human embryos for the first time. The experiment was a failure, but it sparked concerns worldwide. I and my colleagues have called for a global pause. Doudna has long been vocal about the need to set ethical boundaries and is convening an international summit tomorrow in Washington, D.C. What do you hope comes out of that? I think it would be great if we can at least get on the table the key issues. It's hard to imagine that there would be a consensus uh, by all of the parties at the table about how to proceed, but I do think that the first step is really to have that kind of open conversation. As many questions as there are about how to safely use CRISPR, there are still more about who legally owns it. You can't read about you without reading about a patent dispute between you and Dr. Feng Zhang at MIT. How would you describe that back and forth between the two of you? Non-existent. You know, I think both of us are scientists. I leave uh, patent disputes to the people that make the big bucks. But royalties for this technology could be worth billions of dollars. Well, uh, you know, again, I, I try to stay focused on what's important to me, which is the use of this to really treat human disease and to cure other problems in human societies. Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna.
The high hopes and high stakes associated with CRISPR have catapulted Doudna into a rare stratum of scientific celebrity. Last year, she and her research partner received the $3 million breakthrough prize in life sciences, which seems to be only the beginning. Your name has been floated repeatedly for the winner of the Nobel Prize in science. What do you think? Maybe next year? I mean, I'm just incredibly honored and kind of shocked to see that. I don't honestly think much about it. Were you surprised when Time magazine named you one of the 100 most influential people? I was completely surprised. I, that came to, at me out of the blue, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty heady group. You're in with Charlie Rose and Pope Francis. <laughs> yeah, I know, pretty interesting. Uh, it, was a, it was a fun party. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's there right. you go. Yeah, my so line was, whenever I'm in the same sentence with Pope Francis, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. that's right, that's exactly right. right. So this so, is so exciting. Yeah. Tell us what, what's been done so far. In well, animals, for example. Yeah, I mean, CRISPR has been used to design plants with, right. with useful traits in them, so it's already been used in agriculture. Um, they've uh, used it to cure mice of a rare liver disorder caused by a single genetic mutation. Researchers in China have used this to produce super muscled dogs. So we're at the beginning is sort of the promise of this, right. which is why there's some concern. And we should also note there's this patent dispute that's going on, right. and we'll learn this year um, from the U.S. Patent Office another big ruling on that. Is anybody ahead in that battle? for patent rights? Yes, they are. Dr. Zhang, who I mentioned at MIT, has already won 13 out of the 20 CRISPR-related patents. Mm -hmm. So, but this is, the, this is the future, right? This is the oh, future boy. of yeah. disease, yeah. is gene editing. And the nice thing is we've got some great American scientists who are at the forefront Absolutely. of that, too. I like Women that too. Jennifer Dowden. I like yeah. her a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that She's, CRISPR. Yes. You're going to be hearing lots about it. Yeah. I'm, I remember Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> the new movie Youth looks seriously at aging. You could feel her passion. That's what yeah. I like about it.